Today we're going over the question that every photographer faces at some point. Raw versus JPEG. It's another versus here on the Carolina's Photography Podcast. <laughs> I am Jaeger back here with you. Thank you for listening to the show. Thank you for downloading and subscribing. I really do appreciate it. It's so much fun to sit here and talk photography stuff and just really, uh, I don't know, nerd geek out, get hardcore about whatever terminology people like to use. You can hit me up and talk to me directly. Just DM me on Instagram at Carolina's Photography or photo17.com. It's got links to all the social social media, whichever one you prefer, Carolina's Photo, on Twitter. Whew, so many links, so many ways to reach out. And I want to hear from you. Let me know what you think about the show. Tell me your thoughts on what I'm talking about. Please, let's interact and engage. Raw files versus JPEG files. It's pretty clean. It's pretty, pretty clean. Yeah, raw, raw is pretty clean when you shoot a low ISO. It is pretty clear um, to me which one I have to have. It is raw. And I'm going to tell you why. That's the whole point of this podcast. But what brought the question back to me, because it's, I, know, I suppose it's a debate online. <laughs> Maybe I'm biased that I've clearly buried the lead and said, yeah, raw files all the way. Maybe it's a debate. Depends on what you want to do with it. Just like everything, it depends on what you're going to do with it in the end. I'm going to do a whole lot of uh, color grading and Photoshop stuff, Lightroom stuff, and manipulating pictures. So need all the information I can get, all the dynamic range that I can get. I'm going to break it down. But a buddy saw me out, and this blew my mind that raw files um, are sort of this thing that just seems... Uh, a little bit out there um, in a way where it's like this mystical <laughs> level of proportions. I will explain by the question that he proposed to me is if I shoot raw, will I be able to see the photos? And I was like, do you mean literally see as in your LCD screen? And he's like, yeah. I was like, wow. Okay. We've got to talk about raw a little bit. Um, I thought maybe he meant as in seeing how it could come out as a final image saturated like with JPEG. That was not where he was going. And it went some more places, too, that were just like, why did they, all these crazy misnomers come from about raw files? It's very, very simple. Raw files compared to someone giving you a cup that's empty you could pour whatever you want into it versus jpegs somebody's giving you a full cup reason i say that is because jpegs are what we call a lost file as in it's got information and somewhat of a profile applied to it which varies from model to model with jpeg files raw completely uncompressed almost you can also get a <laughs> a version of compressed raw files which kind of defeats the purpose but the reason you would do that is to save space this has been a big thing with raw files which i kind of think could be fading depending on how much you shoot as a professional you probably shoot a lot so space in hard drive space is a price that you're gonna have to tend to you're gonna start getting into Eating a bunch of terabytes of raids and cloud storage or whatever that could be. You don't even have to really be a pro for that. You just shoot a lot of raw files. I haven't had much of a problem with that. For all the shooting and vlogging that I do, um, I might upgrade or replace or add a hard drive of like two terabytes every two years maybe. And those are getting lower and lower. And of course, you can get much bigger ones on a great deal. So I haven't had the hard drive or storage problem that comes along with storing raw files, which are just inherently going to be larger because they're uncompressed files. Why would you want those uncompressed files? Because you can push colors way further. Like I said in that example, somebody gives you an empty cup, you can pour whatever you want to drink in there versus someone giving you some water. You can't pour too much in that cup and you might not be able to mix it with something that tastes good, or maybe you can. <laughs> but you'll have less room inside of it to fill it up with what you want. That is a way to think about raw files. And that also applies to some log footage on video, but that's similar, but a whole other conversation to have. <laughs> They're kissing cousins, but yeah, there's way other things to consider when you shoot like that. But it's kind of coming from, uh, well, you can also shoot 
crazy raw video as well. Yeah, so <laughs> completely different thing, but not really. That's so that's kind of the theme on this show in photography. This is different, but no, there's a lot of similarities. This is completely crazy. No, they're pretty sane and pretty close together and pretty much samey. <laughs> but we're just talking strictly pretty much about still shots today on this show. And I just got to say, I came across so many good articles online uh, talking about this very topic. It's almost time to wrap up as I look at the timer right here. But I do recommend RAW for all those reasons. Dynamic ranges basically just means that from dark to light, I've got more options if I shoot something um, where one area could be kind of dark, one could be kind of bright. I can maybe get some information in there to make a good photo information as in you can see what is intended better and that works better or works the same if it's a darker photo i can maybe lighten it up and get more information out of it that way overexposed can be uh it can be rough sometimes you can claim as they say and get back the information and that you want in photos uh that it might be overexposed but it's just going to depend on the photo, and a lot of variables go into that as well. This stuff really is not that hard. I told you it was maybe a little bit simple, and sometimes I tell you it's a little bit complicated. It is, it is really not. Which The thing about it is so many photos, the countless, endless, infinite number of photos can all be so different. So it's tough to give you a good flat generalization on situations, and I, I can get into that when just doing a single photo shoot, the photos are going to be exposed way, way differently. So I do think that there's a thing where JPEGs are still useful, though, for saving hard drive space and because it gets you started on photos. OK, and if you don't need all that additional dynamic range and tones and things to work on and photos and color. I mean, if you got to shoot for an immediate display and you need to pop it, so pop the photo in something where it can be used in different devices, JPEG's the way to go. You can, of course, shoot JPEG and RAW and cover both bases that way if you want to, but I don't do that anymore. I used to. I did it for the longest time, and I didn't know what RAW files even were. I did not understand it. When I started in 2006, I was just like, this is just a version that doesn't look as good. <laughs> I was like, why does it desaturate it? I had no clue what raw files were, so I was uh, like, as, I couldn't say accidentally because I said it, but I was just shooting that way because it just, uh, I don't know, raw sounds cool. NEF, the Nikon electronic format, as their version of raw, that sounded like the cool thing to do. If you got to go straight to the web, and like I said, many other devices, JPEG is a really good way to go. Saves hard drive space. And it's just your personal use. By all means, go ahead, shoot JPEG. You're not going to do a whole bunch of post-processing. Why even bother? It's okay. You don't have to do it. It's just, it's just your world. Do what you want to do with your photos. Make sure that you have fun. And that is it. That is the topic of RAW versus JPEG with my two cents. I am Jaeger from Photo17.com, the online home of Carolina photography. With these quicker podcasts to talk to you and get in your ear about photos. For those who know a lot about stuff and those who are still learning it's all good. We're all pals here. We're all just enjoying photography and occasionally videography when that's the topic. So this has been your home for those other still and moving pictures. It's Carol Alana's Photography. I am a Jaeger. I will speak with you a little bit later on in life. Thanks for listening, y'all. <laughs>